Lisa's behind the camera. Hi, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, today, um, it's gonna be a little bit of a surprise what we're gonna do, but these are the supplies that we need. So, you guys, I found these really cute mason jars at the dollar store. They're out for the 4th of July right now. Hopefully you can still snag some or maybe you can order them online. If not, I think I've seen mason jar forms and stuff too at probably Hobby Lobby or somewhere like that, but these are super cheap and they're in two different sizes, which is what I love. So I got those. I also happen to find some um, transfers. These are kind of like rub-on transfers, similar to like stickers or stencils, but you rub them on. So, cause I'm not the best at printing or writing. So I got some of those. Then um, we're gonna be using some chalk paint. I, you can you do whatever color you want actually with this, but um, I kind of like blue because mason jars, I like the blue ones. So um, I have a lighter color, a darker color, and elephant gray and a darker gray. I will tell you the names of these after I put my eyes on. So this one is, what is this one called? Do, 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 do. I think this one is called Pool. And this one, let's see here. Gosh, even with my glasses on y'all, I can't read it. Lisa, what does that say? <laughs> Agave. Agave. <laughs> Pool and agave. This one I know is elephant because I looked at it in the store. And this one, what is this one, Lisa? <laughs> I think I That's agave. elephant. Let's That's see what that elephant. one is. <laughs> What's that one? It's like a mineral. <laughs> mineral. Mineral. <laughs> elephant. Pool and agave. Okay, so these are just Waverly chalk paints. I got these from Walmart. Um, and then I also got some of these giant craft sticks that I know um, pretty much you can get anywhere, any craft store. Um, again, Walmart, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, Joanne Fabrics, whatever. I have a little spackle that I'm just gonna need to fill in a hole. I have some assorted ribbons I wanna use for hanging it and some silk flowers. Um, I think I got these at the dollar store cause it kind of looked like baby's breath, you know, the whole mason jar baby's breath trend. And these little wispy things that almost look like Queen Anne's lace or wishers. I'm not really sure what they're called. I had those in my arsenal of supplies. And then of course, paint brushes, water, and scissors, and a few tools. And we are ready to get started. So I'm just gonna push some of this stuff out of my way so we can start with the basics. Okay, so first things first, guys. Let's start with our background. So we're gonna take some of these craft sticks and I think I'm using about, I wanna say 11 or so of these, 10 or 11. Um, you can make this as big or as small as you want to. Basically, we're just gonna line them up. And what you'll notice too, um, guys, sometimes these are not perfectly flat. Sometimes they're a little warped or wobbly, but I kind of want this to look like an old palette anyway, or a picket fence or something. So for me, that's fine. I kind of like the juxtaposition of them being a little bit wonky. Um, you don't even have to put them in a perfect line if you don't want. Um, so basically, we're just gonna line them up like this. Okay. And there we go. And then I'm gonna take two, two or three of my other sticks and I am going to glue these on. This is gonna hold it together. So I'm gonna put one up here. And if they're not perfectly, perfectly even, that's okay, or if it bothers you. But I kinda of want it to, to look pretty country. And just hold these tight together until the paint I'm sorry, until the uh, glue dries. And I'm going to do one more on this side. Again, holding all your sticks together. Now, if you're doing one less, one less row of sticks, this would be perfect. <laughs> this 
This one just, just doesn't quite reach. And then look at this little, little lonely guy on the bottom to stick. And just like that. And it doesn't matter if they're perfectly straight on the back. Nobody's going to see it because why? It's the back. So, okay. Ta da! Ah. Okay, it's still drying a little bit, but I think we can continue. So, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to paint this. So, um, I just want to basically dry brush this, whitewash it a little bit. I don't want to add too, too much color. Um, I just kind of want to give it ever so little. So let's start with our white. Okay guys, so we're going to start with just a little bit of white. I'm also going to put a little bit of mineral. <laughs> I'm going to have that ready and I'll probably even drag through a little bit of the blue. So I'm just going to kind of use this dry chip brush. And when you're whitewashing, dry brushing, whatever you want to call it, you don't want a lot of paint on here. Um, and you don't want to paint these too heavily because they will warp. They're just, I don't know, balsa wood or whatever. So I'm just kind of randomly, messily, that's my new word for today, messily. I'm messily painting, just dragging it through random areas of these craft sticks. And I don't want them too perfect. I just don't want them to look like raw wood. I want it to look like an old weather fence post or pallet, whatever. So, and I don't want to get it too, too wet. And don't worry, guys, if I get it on my table, the joy of this table is it's tile washes off. There's been so much stuff on my table over the years, guys. Cookie sprinkles and frosting and paints and geez, you name it, Easter egg dye. This table has taken a beating. Takes a licking and keeps on ticking. But that's one of the things I love about it. It hides, hides a multitude of messes. So you can kind of see where we're going with this. Try to go all the way to the edge and off. You don't want an exact starting point. If you're just going to do a little section in the middle, make sure you feather it in and out. Okay, so now I'm going to take just a little bit of this mineral, as Lisa tells me it's called. This is chalk paint, and no chalk paint dries like so now we're going to put a little bit of this mineral chalk paint. And like I said, it dries really quick, so you kind of have to work with it fast. And I'm just using kind of an old chip brush from the dollar store. You don't want a real silky brush for this. You kind of want a gnarly old brush because you just want to look like wood grain kind of coming through. Hopefully you can see this. Just a hair more. And I usually go back and forth a couple times with this. And again, get some on the edges and some just a little bit in the middle. But you just don't want to get these things too wet. And then I'm just going to put a little bit of this blue color. I almost want the boards to look patina, kind of like they've weathered. Could even look like a little MG or mold or something on it, I don't know. But I just thought a little hint of the blue coming through would be cool. And I'm kind of going where the other colors are not. And it's not perfect. It doesn't have to be. And keep in mind, we're not just going to be looking at 
craft sticks. There's going to be stuff on top of this, so. With just a little bit more weight here and there to soften it. Okay, so I'm going to put this off to the side to dry. And Lisa's making faces at me. Okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> and while that's drying, I'm going to paint these. And once that's dry, I'll show you a close-up of what that looks like. So again, this was, I think this is just one of those things that give you a few markers. You can color with it. We don't need that part of it. Um, it said color your own decor. It was from Dollar Tree. And then this one is supposed to be a wind chime. This one says, oh, beautiful. And I'm going to use the star out of here, too because why not? It's cute. And I'm gonna save the wind chimes and the paint and everything for something else another time. Okay, so first things first, because this one was meant to be a wind chime, it's got holes in it, so I'm gonna take the spackle I had. Um, you can use whatever kind of hole filler you have just to fill in these holes a little bit um, because I don't want them showing through. Put it in a little bit with your finger so it comes out the other side. That's okay. Just push it through until we get it level. There we go. And then at the bottom, you can do this with a anything. The end of a paintbrush or a Q-tip or a little putty knife or whatever. It doesn't really bother me if it's on my fingers. Okay, so we're going to let that dry for a minute. And in the meantime, we're going to start painting our bigger jar. Now, I am going to paint the back side of this just because it won't take as many coats as going over this. Um, at the end of the day, this is you're not going to see the back of this. So I'm just going to go over this because then these are the only words that I'm going to have to deal with. So I'm going to start with the darker color, agave. Lisa's nodding. Yes, agave. <laughs> I got it. It's agave. <laughs> and just pour a little bit of that out. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing here, guys. And first things first, I'm going to go over this. This thing has like a little bit of a flaw in it, but we'll pretend it's not there. I could just put some more spackle in there and cover it up, honestly. So just up to where the jar lid would start and all the way down and on the table like that. And I wish I had a wet paper towel. <laughs> Wipe that off. Lisa's getting me water. Can you hear that? <laughs> that was a hint. That was a hint. She got the hint. Thank you, Lisa. Lisa talks too. She wouldn't want to ruin your table. <laughs> I asked you if you wanted to put a pad down. I wasn't supposed to make a mess. Maybe that's how that works. I just don't want to lean into it, really. See how nice that table clears up? Great for crafting. Okay, so make sure you get the sides because we'll get yelled at if we don't. Gonna do a quick once over on the sides. Doesn't have to be perfect. Sometimes I think the more rustic things are, the more I like them. Happy accidents. Yep. We have a lot of those, don't we? Yeah. 
Lisa and I have a lot of happy accidents. We're making lemonade all day long. <laughs> yeah, that's our motto, boy. Woo. And I'm going to take this darker color, Elephant, which I've been calling the wrong one this whole time. And a little brush here for the elephant. And we're just going to paint this top part. Elephant. And I'm trying to use bigger brushes, guys, so it doesn't take so long. Drives me crazy sometimes when I watch videos and people are like using these itty bitty brushes to paint these ginormous surfaces and it takes forever and I lose my patience and I keep thinking, get a bigger brush, get a bigger brush. Or they don't have things ready or their battery dies mid video. Ugh. It's like, wait, how did it end? What happens next? So I'm trying to go fast here. So it's not like watching paint dry, which I know it kind of is, but okay. So we have that. And beautiful colored fingers to go along with it, but that's okay. And I'm just going to let this dry a little bit while I go to my next one, which is my little guy. And then here too, I'm going to paint the back. Um, I'm not sure how this is going to work with the uh, spackle still a little bit wet, but use your imagination. I don't want to make you wait. So now I'm going to go with this lighter color, pool. I am really getting these colors down now. Woo, look out. Look out, y'all. So a little bit of pool. I apologize for my messy brushes. I was just telling Lisa I need to get new brushes and new glue gun for these videos. Mine are well worn. They're well used. Yes. You've been around with me for a long time. The funny thing is, you guys, I was looking for, I have probably eight glue guns in my craft room in the basement. I looked through all eight of them. Do you think I even had one that wasn't all glommed up? Nope. Same thing with my brushes. As long as the bristles are clean, I don't pay any attention to this. But of course, today, videotaping, I couldn't find one that was presentable. But they're well loved, well used, and that's okay. Okay, and again, get the edges. This will be that one person that will say something. <laughs> There's always one. <laughs> Not you guys, I just mean whoever you show this to. And if you ever want to sell these, like, you know, give them as gifts or sell them in a craft fair or something, if you want to cover your work, cover your workings, have it look nice. Okay, and then I'm taking the lighter gray, which is mineral. Ooh, that was not good. That one had a goober on the, on the edge of it. That's what we affectionately call goobers. <laughs> All these high tech terms. <laughs> He's a laugh. <laughs> okay. We don't mess around here. We are high tech crafters. <laughs> goobers, pink goobers, and glue boogers. And we got it going on. Woo! Don't worry if your line's a little crooked like mine is. I'll go back and straighten it out in a second, but we are gonna be tying something around the, the jar lid. So if it's not perfect, it's okay. It's okay. Okay, so let's see how 
we're drying here, guys. Pretty good. It's getting there. It's getting there. Okay, so right now you're looking at this thinking pretty boring, right? I agree. Pretty boring. So let's go back and give these some some texture, some dimension. work with what we got. Okay, so I'm going back to my dry brush, guys, and I'm going back into the mineral. Jeez, I'm messy Bessie today. Wow. Sheesh. Need a little finger bowl for my fingers. So we're going back into mineral. <laughs> Just making sure wipe most of this paint off. I don't know, hopefully you guys can see me. Can they see me, Lisa? Yeah, okay, so we're getting most of that off. And then I kind of want to just blot this down because I want it a little bit wonky. And just take it and drag it through. One more time for good measure. I'm just trying to make it look like it's got those little textures like jars have. This one, we're going to do just the opposite. We're trying to have different colored jars, different colored lids, just for interest. You can do these both the same, honestly, guys. You can do them the same. Just kind of drag it through a couple times, just trying to give it some texture, some dimension. It'll look better when it dries too. You're not seeing all the colors coming out yet. Okay. And then we want to do the same to the jars. Just kind of drag the brush through a little bit. I'm trying to keep my table clean for you guys. <laughs> I think you're going to need that too. I think I'm going to need a big towel. <laughs> okay. All right. So, now what we're going to do, now what we're going to do, after Lisa hands me another towel, it was great to have an assistant. <laughs> I'll do the same for her. Next time we're Stay tuned school. for our next video. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the behind the scenes. We'll have a bloopers video. That'd be fun. <laughs> next time her beads all go flying off the table and bouncing all over the floor. Yeah. <laughs> One video if she did, she hung up her wind chimes here and they kept clanging. Clanging and clanging and I was on my hands and knees under the table trying to silence the wind chimes. <laughs> That's what friends do. Okay, so we, we just want to put a little bit of highlight on the jars, guys. So um, what you're going to want to do, put half of your brush. This is the one I used for the pool. I have to I'll stop and think of the name. So half of my brush, I'm putting some pool on it. And then this part of the brush, I'm dipping in agave. What is agave? I don't even know what, what agave is. So see how I'm kind of blending them a little bit here? And then I'm just going to kind of follow the lines of the jar a little bit. And then flip your brush over so you're doing the same on the other side. And go down a couple times. So 
same thing with here. See how it's kind of making the jar look rounded? Okay. And then guess what? I'm going to do the same thing with this, but reverse. So I'm going to pour out a little bit of paint or put a little bit on here so I can get a little bit more on my brush since this guy is bigger. And then same thing. Cool. I don't want to stick my dirty brush in and contaminate my colors. So, again, here's the agave, here's the pool, and then kind of blend them on your paper plate until you start seeing your line fading a little bit there. And now I'm turning the brush and doing it the other way, otherwise it's just going to be a dark edge and I want it to look like the jar is rounded. So I'm coming around like this. too much on because you don't want you don't want to get it too wet because this is only I don't even know what are these made out of Lisa probably balsa wood balsa wood or yeah very porous yes when you put too much paint on your jar will be round <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whether yeah. you're trying to or not We just kind of want it to look old and kind of rounded, vintagey. That's really all we're trying to do. Give it a little bit of color and dimension. And it looks a little bit lighter here, but it is the agave color, so it will dry the right color once it dries. Same thing in here where you're seeing like the lighter color. It will, it will go away. You won't see that light stripe through the middle once everything is said and done. To make sure I'm going the right way here. Whoa! Yeah, that one was much lighter. Much, much, much. Starting to go in the right direction here. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but my allergies are going a little crazy today. Okay. Okay, we're gonna let these dry. We are gonna come back to our background and see if that needs anything else. So let me just set these out of the way to dry. Put my paints away. And also guys, you can also go in the other direction with them. So if you can go horizontal or vertical with this thing. Anything goes. Okay. I wanna make sure I don't get any paint on places I don't want it. Here we are now with our background. Remember how we um, glued up the back like that? Now you can go this way with it or this way with it. It's personal preference depending where you want to hang this or how you want to do it. Um, I'm going to go this way with it because I have a certain wall in my kitchen that I, I want this to go, but you can do it either way. And hopefully you can see some of the gray through it, some of the white, some of the blue, and then the, some of the natural. Um, craft stick color. It kind of comes through. Once the paint dries, this is pretty well dry. And like I said, it's a little uneven. Some of the sticks I used are a little warped, but that's okay. I want it to look like an old fence or an old palette or something. You also can trim off the edges if you want, if you want this just squared up. Or you can even stagger them and make them jagged. That would be cool too. So since I have this glued down, this is what we're doing. <laughs> okay, so I found this um, little piece of little piece of wood I don't know what it was left over some previous craft and I'm all about using what I have so this is what we're going to use here 
And I'm trying to create something that looks like a little shelf um, that my jars can sit on. So I'm gonna glue this on. And all of a sudden my nose is tickly. Of course, why is that? Did you ever notice that? Whenever you're not supposed to scratch or, <laughs> yeah. or the doctor says hold your breath or don't move or something and all of a sudden you get an itch. It seems to happen when I put my mask on lately. Oh, boy. Guys, these COVID masks that we're wearing, I mean, we're past lockdown now. We're opening back up again, and we're still trying to practice social distancing, although Lisa and I have been pretty much together the, on and off the whole time, um, other than her family, her husband and her kids, and my husband and my kids. Um, that's been about it. So, But because we kind of work together and do this, we pretty much know that that we're good, but we are starting to open back up. We haven't really gone out and done much though. It's like we go to each other's houses and that's about it. But even during the, like the real intense lockdown, we didn't even go to each other's houses. We just talked yeah. on the phone or- Planned. Video chatted or whatever, emailed each other. That was about the extent of it. So, okay, so we've got that. We've got that there. So, um, Okay guys, so um, I waited for the jars to dry and you can see this is pretty much how they're turning out now. This is dry. I know it looks funny until it dries and it's a little streaky and that's what I wanted. Um, but I just want a little bit of highlights around the edge and same thing with the jar lid. Just by dragging a dry brush across it just, I want it to look like the little um, things, the little screw things from the lid. And then I already put the word on this one, but I'll show you how I did that. And then this is the small one. So this is where we're at right now. Um, so as you can see, I already put the transfer on that one. And I'm just gonna take a little bit of raffia, I think, and tie it. Woo, woo, it's getting away from me. Tie it around my jar. yet what side of the jar I'm gonna put it on. I'm really bad at doing things upside down <laughs> <laughs> or backwards or whatever. It's really different when you do videos guys because you're you're trying to show people what you're doing but it's everything's foreign to you so makes it a little bit more difficult than what I'm used to. Okay so we've got that one done. And we're gonna do the same thing with this one. Let's put a little bit of raffia on this one as well. Hopefully this looks cute, guys, in my mind's eye. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this one. I'm gonna put this raffia on. And then remember that star that came out of the wind chime kit? Let's use that too, why not? Now you can paint it if you want. You could just do these red, white, and blue for 4th of July, guys, if you wanted. You could just do the jars, something that would look clear. Um, and paint the star blue and have red flowers coming out of it or whatever. Um, so it's just, I'm, I'm doing it so it works in my kitchen year round. But so you can have so much fun with this. You can do it so many different ways. You could do it Christmassy or whatever. So the sky's the limit with that. So I'm just gonna move it over to one side here. Okay, and then just to show you how these transfers work, I got one with like assorted words on it. So this one I put gather because I'm gonna put flowers in it, so that seemed to make sense. And this one, I want the same, um, type style. So I notice there's the word home, there's laughter. I think I'm going to say laughter. That way it'll basically read gather laughter if anybody reads it together. So basically just be careful but cut out your words. 
And like I said, I got this transfer at the dollar store, but I would think any craft store probably has these and they're, they're pretty jazzy. I like them. Because like I said, I, my printing and writing is terrible. Um, terrible handwriting, terrible printing, especially when you're trying to paint. Stencils are kind of a hassle too sometimes, so this um, kind of is the next best thing. And you can put this, if you put this outside on your porch, I would recommend like finish coating it, you know, spraying it with polyurethane or something. But um, if you're going to have it inside, it's probably fine the way it is. You could go over it with Mod Podge or if you wanted, or like I said, sp uh, spray coating. So here I have the word laughter, and you just peel off the backing, and then just kind of figure out your placement. And I'm going to put it right about here. Hopefully I'm straight. There we go. That looks pretty good. And then basically you just burnish it off. You can use a popsicle stick or your fingernail. You just kind of rub it. And what it does is it kind of comes off the, uh, the piece of plastic and adheres, the sticky back adheres to the, uh, to the thing that you're doing. I don't know about you, I used to play with these as kids. Do you remember these, Lisa? Oh yeah. Transfers, oh. I think there was actually like coloring books or something that you would transfer the whole entire picture like this. Well, I'm gonna probably date myself, but I used to, as a graphic designer way back when, sometimes we'd have to use these kind of letters for certain he that. headlines and things. I do remember that, I remember that well, yeah. And the worst thing was when you had to do one letter at a time <sighs> and try to get your spacing and, oh, that was rough. I remember that. Okay, so when it kind of becomes opaque like that, um, that should mean that it's transferred onto your surface. And then you just peel it off behind a corner. Ta-da! How cute is that? And then just make sure it's down. Isn't that cute, you guys? Gather laughter. Aww. Aww. Okay, so I'm gonna kneel up a little bit here. Hopefully I stay in view, but just for the sake of um, attaching these. I can see what I'm doing. Now, I don't want to just glue these flat because I think that's boring. <laughs> I want to give it a little dimension, a little bit of depth. So I'm actually going to glue a little bead to the back of this one. And then I found this little wooden thread um, spool, I guess it is. And I'm going to glue this to the back of this one because I want them to stick out a little bit. I want to put flowers there. I just, I think anybody can glue them flat. I kind of wanted to, um, to have them stick out a little bit more. Okay, so first, and keep in mind guys, um, you know, I'm doing it this way, but you totally could do it this way if you wanted with both of them. Um, if you wanted to just have two jars, and have them be the same two or three. You can you could do this really long if you wanted. Um, you can could stagger them, get a couple, and have some large and small. Um, so you know this is just a thought starter for you. But um, you know at the end of the day, make this however you want. You do not have to copy this perfectly. So let's see here. And then make sure uh, make sure um, it doesn't go past your ledge because <laughs> the jar actually has to be sitting on the ledge. I know it's funny, but that's how that works. This works that way sometimes. I did measure ahead of time just to make sure and then make sure it's right at the bottom. See how that's helping it stick out? It's giving me some depth. You can do the 
this one in front or behind? I'm on the fence about that. I'll just do it behind. Just wait a second for that bead to catch. Okay, last step, second last step, second last step. Gotta put some flowers in the vases. So I got this stuff, um, like I said, I think I got this from the dollar store. I thought it looked pretty close to baby's breath. Um, Close enough anyway. There is no really good artificial baby's breath on the market that I've seen yet. I can't wait for the day that there is, but for right now, this is this is what we have to work with. Okay. And I can get comfortable again now that I got my placement on my jars. So I'm just going to some of these back there. Whoops. <laughs> That's one way to do it. That's okay because I was actually going to um, take some off to do on the sides. When you put your flowers on, guys, don't don't put them all straight across. Kind of, you know, make them more of a rounded bunch, not just plop, plopped and dropped. That's another new word, plopped and dropped. <laughs> a new Boy, what a vocabulary you for the day. Woohoo! Aren't you so glad you're learning something? All these craft terms. <laughs> oh, high tech, high tech at its best. We are just, we are just really, woo, and you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Terms every crafter should know. Right. And everybody needs to know about glue boogers. Fact of life. <laughs> And you can use any flowers, guys, like bright yellow would be really cute in here. Um, you know, whatever you think, whatever would match your kitchen. I'm kind of doing this a little more neutral. I want it to just look like white baby's breath and white wishers, but by all means, do whatever. Like I said, bright yellow would be cute, orange would be cute, hot pink, you can put daisies in. Um, whatever you think you like. So this is where we're at so far. How um, cute is that? Isn't it so cute? <laughs> Guys, this is too cute. I can't stand it. Whoa. Flowers fly. Oh, another flyer. There we go. And it doesn't need a lot, don't overcrowd it. But when you think about it, guys, a couple of things from the dollar store and the craft store. Honestly, a dollar for this jar, a dollar for that. I think the pops the craft sticks were maybe two dollar, two forty seven a bag, and there's a ton in the bay. This is like the third or fourth project I've made with them. Paints don't cost that much, and you didn't use that no. much. Oh, and pay, yeah, the paint. So you got about cost. less than ten dollars in this project. For sure, yeah, for sure. Okay, and then I just want to do one other thing here. I feel like I just want a flower like it fell out of the vase and just kind of dropped on the shelf. Because it's all about the details. So 
so far. Now we just need to hang it up. Very cute. What do you think? What do you think? Okay, so um, we're just going to hang it up. And there goes my beads. <laughs> um, I think we're just going to make one of those messy bows, guys. Just a short little messy bow. So we're going to dovetail the, uh, the ends of the ribbon. I just have some different shades of blue ribbons. I'm not going to put too much. So we'll do a little bit of that. I've got this kind of uh, brownish topish. It's got a little bit of green, a little bit of brown, beige. It kind of goes nice with the background. It goes nice with my kitchen. So I'm going to put a little bit of that. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm just going to kind of angle it. One more this way. One more this way. And I'm also going to put a little bit of twine in. I think it's fun and messy. And I'm going to also put a little bit of raffia in because it's what I used on the jars. So I think that might be a cute addition. Okay. There we go. And I'm just going to piece of this to tie it up. I'm so glad they are doing these bows now, you guys, because, I mean, I can make bows because I'm a floral designer, too, so I've been making bows my whole life. I can make bows like a jackrabbit, but I, so many people struggle with bow making. Plus, this just saves on the ribbon, and I just, I think it's just such kind, such a cute, kind of messy, rustic -y look. So I'm really glad they finally... Plus you can use scraps. Oh, yeah, all the time. I'm always using scraps. Okay, so I'm just kind of pulling these out. I usually kind of do one up, one down, one up, one down. There we go. Give it a haircut. Okay, and then we will attach it. I'm just going to tie a knot a couple times. You could do this probably with raffia too. I'm doing it with rope because sometimes raffia will break. But you certainly could, or you could mix the two. That would be fine as well. Okay, I'm just going to glue this on. Don't burn your paper. This is the scariest part of all. <laughs> I've burned my fingers so many times, you guys. We still have fingerprints? <laughs> oh, yeah. I probably don't have fingerprints anymore. And I have to find the other side for this. This up here. So excited. 
I just can't find the right key. You were all thinking that. Come on. I know you all were. <laughs> and the older ones, anyway. You youngsters watching, you probably have no idea what I'm talking about here. Ow, see? Ow. <laughs> I did it again. <laughs> oh, well, you know, I have to demonstrate. This is how you burn your fingers. Yes. <laughs> Burning your fingers 101 by witchcrafts. Okay. Okay, guys. I think we've coached it. So this is our finished little craft. Can you see it? How cute is that? And then again, you can do it in whatever colors, whatever flowers, horizontal, vertical. I'm just giving you inspiration. There you go. There. Can you see it? Yep. I just want to give you some inspiration and make yours your own. And make sure you stay tuned. Like us, share us, follow our page. Um, and please join us next time to see which craft we do next. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.